Now we've been talking a little bit about the material conditional and the ways that it works, but also some of its shortcomings or apparent shortcomings when it comes to representing conditional statements in natural language. And we've also seen that the strict conditional was meant to handle some of these problems, although it had problems of its own. But after making the last video on the strict conditional, it occurred to me that there are actually some contexts in which there is no difference between the strict conditional and the material conditional, at least in terms of truth conditions. And I wanted to make a quick video and address that. Have a look at the following sentence. If grass is green, then Lassie is famous. Grass is green is true, and so is Lassie is famous. And so this all comes out as a true material conditional. Now this is a bit troubling because of course there's nothing about grass being green that guarantees that Lassie is famous. And so one way of fixing this problem is to import a conditional of the following form which is sometimes called the strict conditional which says necessarily if grass is green then Lassie is famous. So we say in every world in which grass is green, we'll box this so that it looks like our modal operator, Lassie is famous. And this is obviously false because there are conceivable worlds in which grass is green and Lassie isn't famous or Lassie doesn't even exist. So this is our strict conditional and it's meant to deal with some of these problems of the material conditional. But it has problems of its own. For instance, consider the following which will be true because the consequent is true in every world. If grass is green, then 2 plus 2 equals 4. Well, this consequent is true in every possible world. There is no possible world in which 2 plus 2 equals 9. And so this comes out as a true strict conditional. But this can lead us to an interesting insight in the relationship between the material conditional and the strict conditional, and also why it is that the material conditional operates the way it does. The point just is that where the subject matter is necessary, that is to say where the subject matter is true in all possible worlds, or true in every world, the material conditional and the strict conditional have the same truth conditions. And accordingly, our addition of this modal operator in every world is superfluous where we're just dealing with a necessary subject matter to begin with. Why does this matter? Well, because math has as its subject matter something necessary, which is to say true in all possible worlds. And the material conditional was created for mathematical arguments. So this whole modal operator right here is in a way superfluous and can be done away with. And I think that explains a good deal of why the material conditional, although it seems so strange for natural language, works so well for math, which is because the math itself provides some support to it, given the nature of mathematical truths. You might think about it in the following very loosely analogous way. A squid is able to have the structure it has because it's given a lot of support by its medium, which is to say the water. But the minute you take it out and try to stand it up on dry land, it of course can't stand. And similarly, the material conditional works very well precisely because of the context it's used in, which is to say a mathematical context, but when it gets brought out of that and into a subject matter in which there are additional modal considerations and things that need to be supplied because they're not a part of the subject matter, then the whole thing kind of falls down. I don't know whether this is going to be controversial or not, but anyway, it seems to me to be a true observation and also an interesting one.